Hello everyone, I'm Santiago Santiago, and today I'm going to be testing the Halo franchise on the Steam Deck, which is Halo Infinite and Halo the Master Chief Collection. This is what's on Steam right now, so the Master Chief Collection has basically everything that you needed to experience those classic games from... well, I'm going to show you right now. And then Halo Infinite, we're going to do campaign and multiplayer, so let's get into it right away. Before starting, the first thing that I need to mention is that the Master Chief Collection, with almost everything installed, is 107 gigabytes, so you'll need a lot of space. Then Halo Infinite is like 60 gigabytes, so keep that in mind if you want to play the franchise, you can install the games separately, but everything together is like 100 gigabytes. With Halo Infinite at the same time, it's like 170 in total. So for everything in the Master Chief Collection, we're going to be using the Enhanced UI graphics, 800p, which is native resolution, 90 degrees FOB, FSR disabled, but you can use it if you want to. I don't think it's necessary in this case. And then on the settings, everything is on the highest, and we will apply all this for all the games in the Master Chief Collection. That means Halo CE, Halo 2, 3, ODST, 4, and those are the settings, all the same on all the games. So let's get into the first game. So we start with the Halo 1, the remastered version. As you can see, we're over 60. So if you have an OLED Steam Deck, you're not going to reach the 90 FPS target, but if you press Tab or Map Tab to <laughs> one of the keys of the Steam Deck, you're going to get the old graphics, and that'll give you over 100 FPS very easily, so if you want a smoother experience with worse graphics, of course, you can do that. Just map the tab key to something on the Steam Deck, like the back buttons, and you can switch on the fly. I'm going to go back to the good graphics. So yeah, there's a stark performance difference, obviously, but I mean, with the new visuals it kind of makes sense. And performance is completely fine, although I'll lock it to 60 just for that battery life. Which is probably going to be 2 hours on this one, with a 6 FPS lock. Otherwise, yeah, you can use unlock frame rates, but it won't hit 90 FPS consistently. Which is kind of a shame. But eh, we cannot do everything, I guess. So if you're looking for 60s, I, I would say that's ideal for this one, on the Steam Deck at least, when it comes to usage of the hardware itself and battery life. So if you want like 2 hours of battery, just lock it to 60. Doinks. Doinks. <laughs> so let's jump into the next one. Halo 2 Anniversary Edition. This one visually is a huge leap <laughs> over the original Halo 2. There's also a button to go to the older graphics, so same as the other one, with tab, you can jump between the old and the new. Of course, the old graphics will give you over 100 FPS all the time, so if you want smoothness, that's how you do it. If you want visuals on play at 6 FPS, I recommend the new graphics. They look pretty good, actually. And well, what to say about this one? Just like I said on the previous one, go here, unlock it to 60. For battery life's sake, I highly recommend you do so. This should be around two and a half hours of battery, I would say, two, two and a half. So yeah. Not perfect, but depending on the level, it will use less of the system. In this case, it doesn't use a lot of resources, it's just more of a GPU heavy game, especially with the new graphics. The old ones, <laughs> not so much. With this, you should probably have like 4 hours of battery if you use the old graphics locked to 60. But it's good enough with the new graphics, in my opinion. Totally worth playing. Especially on the smaller screen, it looks super sharp. I cannot stress that enough. <laughs> So anyway, let's jump into the next one. Alright, so for Halo 3, there is no new graphics. So you got basically Halo 3 from the 360 era, which doesn't look bad at all in my opinion, but it's a stark contrast with the visuals of Halo 2 Anniversary. 
But again, Halo 3 Portable, which is awesome. I never thought I would have this when I played the 360 version at a friend's house. It blew my mind. So for this one, again, you can unlock the frame rate. It'll hit probably, yeah, most of the time the 70 FPS range. So if you want more, use FSR for the Steam Deck OLED owners. As you guys are probably targeting 90 FPS. For the rest of us LCD Steam Deck owners, lock it to 60 and you should be good to go. Battery life should be better. <clears throat> Usage of the hardware itself will be lower as well, less heat. And this one is probably 2 hours as well. That's my guess. Which, I mean, it's not amazing if you have an OLED deck. It will last longer than two hours, that's for sure. <clears throat> that's for sure. In my opinion, not bad at all. Halo 3 ODST. So this one runs better than Halo 3 so far. Seems to be dropping into the 80 to 90 FPS range in more demanding scenes. But so far, a better running game than Halo 3. Which is good to see. Halo 3 already run fine. I'm not sure if this one released before or after Halo 3. I really do not remember. I never touched this one. At first I thought it was an expansion to Halo 3, but apparently it's its own game. Which I thought it was pretty interesting. And what to say, 100 FPS right now. On the Steam Deck OLED, lock it to 90, you should be good to go. Probably going to hit the 90 FPS target, no problem. In this case, I'm locking it to 60 because LCD Steam Deck. And we want to save some battery because we're not seeing the extra frames, of course. And well, it's probably 3 hours of battery, considering it's basically using half the GPU. Which is good news. And if you're someone like me that never played this one, well, now is the chance. Completely portable, looks super sharp in the smaller screen. And you get a, a good amount of battery out of it. Which is always good to see. I mean, if you have the OLED Steam Deck, maybe 4 or 5 hours of battery. But on the LCD Steam Deck, 3 hours, I'd say. So let's jump into the next one. Before... There we go. That one killed me. Halo Reach. So this is the first time, the first game I heard about from this franchise, funnily enough. I had a friend that was crazy about it on the 360. Um, personally, the first time I looked at it was on the PC, so this is my first version that I played of the game. And I gotta say, it's completely fine. There are some CPU-limited situations here and there, with drops, which drops into the 70 FPS range. Not much that we can do about it. So if you have an OLED Steam Deck and want to get like 90 FPS, consider locking it to 90 and using FSR Ultra Quality. Grenade! Oh yeah, there we go. Finally some combat. There's too many of them. Let me see if I have another weapon. Oh, yeah. The best gun in the game. Look at that. <laughs> so if you want to play Halo Reach on Steam Deck, it's a great platform to do so. I would say it uses the entire screen. Completely solid 60s. If you have an OLED deck and want to target 90 FPS, not an issue. Just enable FSR Ultra Quality. You should be good to go. There are some drops due to the CPU limitation there when targeting 90 for some reason. But overall, it's still a great looking game. 3 hours of battery. And it feels more modern. So no issues whatsoever. Now playing Halo 4. And well, this one visually is superior to the third. <laughs> obviously. That's why it's called 4. And uh, unlock frame rates we get basically 70 fps in the worst case scenario most of the time we are into the 90s to 100 fps so if you have an oled steam deck shouldn't be an issue let's now lock the frame rate to 60 just for battery life sake and less heat less noise 
and just like the other ones, I'm guessing two and a half hours of battery of this one. Okay, so now some combat, finally. And the GPU usage gets higher, so this is where it drops probably into the 70 to 80 FPS range. So if you want to stay in the 90s in the OLED Steam Deck, I'll probably use FSR quality or ultra quality for this one. Again, I don't think it's much of an issue most of the time. But there you go, I said it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think the pistol would do anything to this one. But as you can see, it works just fine. We still got the nice specials. And the controls feel just like on the 360 with a controller. But you can also use a mouse and keyboard if you're playing on a PC, as an example. So let's jump into the next one. Remember that Halo 5 is not on PC. And finally, Halo Infinite. First the campaign, then the multiplayer, but the settings will be basically the same. 800p. Minimum frame rate of 60, so dynamic resolution targeting 60, same with the maximum, that's how the options menu works. Lower settings, as you can see. And that's basically it. So, what's the issue with Halo Infinite? Well, pretty simple. It just cannot maintain 60s. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> so... The dynamic resolution works, the game looks softer, but um, it just stutters when there is a lot of GPU demand on it. Usually when looking into the distance, like this, or there's multiple enemies attacking, and also drops into the 40s at times. So my advice would be either to lock it to 40, or lock it to 30. So we maintain a slightly higher resolution while stability takes a front seat, to say it in some way, especially in the campaign. That is way more demanding than the multiplayer that I'm going to show you in a bit. But yeah, we're basically using low settings on this one. Which I mean, after playing the other ones, is a stark contrast. <laughs> especially for the... From the third game onwards, I don't know, the art style just clicks differently in those. So let's adjust the settings a tiny bit. Okay, it takes a few seconds, but now it shows at 40. And we got a high resolution. But we just need to put the screen at 40 Hz. Still not perfect frame times, unfortunately. A little bit soft, but on the smaller screen it really holds up pretty well. I would recommend the same thing for the multiplayer. Despite being less demanding, I think it's worth capping it either at 30 or 40 as well. So yeah. Not perfect really, very unstable, even if I disable dynamic resolution altogether. But when you're getting close to the GPU bounce, to say it in some way, you're going to have this result. So you might as well <laughs> target 30s instead. So we target 30 now with a maximum of 60. And in the campaign is basically a blessing. Yeah, there's still stutter, but the game looks better. And well, it can hold up a little bit better, still not, not nowhere close to perfect, so I'll probably skip Halo Infinite. So let's now jump into a multiplayer instead. Now we're playing the multiplayer with a minimum frame rate of 60 and a maximum of 60. So the game will basically lower the resolution dynamically to try and get to 60 FPS across the board. It's not perfect, you'll have some drops when there is multiple enemies. But it's way better than the campaign, that's for sure, when it comes to performance. So yeah, smaller maps, less enemies on screen, less stuff going on. So yeah. 
but the resolution is pretty low in comparison to the screen's native. It still looks good in the smart screen in my opinion, but yeah, it's pretty aggressive dynamic resolution. So yeah, that's Halo Infinite multiplayer. Again, the single player, I wouldn't recommend it. What I would recommend is the Master Chief Collection for this one. Runs at 6 FPS, it's basically flawless. And well, Halo Infinite, while the campaign is a lot of fun, at least in my opinion, doesn't hold up on the performance side unless you're targeting like 30 FPS. But the image quality and the performance isn't super consistent, so... So yeah. I'll just play the Master Chief Collection and enjoy those classics. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did revisiting all the Halo games. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.